Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to the channel. I'm Alan and this is my 2006 Dodge Magnum RT with a 5.7 liter. Yes, it has seen better days, but maybe we'll get a painted in the future. Maybe it won't, I don't know. Anyways, what we're working on today is replacing this old, crappy, yellow overflow container with an aluminum one that won't give out on the lid. So a common problem for these is the plastic just gets brittle and gives way. I've had my cap pop off. Aside from the ugly color, it's just not desirable anymore. So I looked around and, uh, you know, Mishimoto would have been my go-to, but they're not making one for this year yet. But there are some cheaper guys on Amazon making them for probably a lot better price anyways. No, they probably don't have the internal baffling that, uh, you know, the other more expensive brands would have given it but it's probably still going to work, I hope. Now, there are some negative reviews on this thing from the store I bought it from. There's, you know, not the best weld quality on some of them, but I checked this guy out and it seems to be in pretty good shape all the way around. Didn't see anything obvious. I could go and get like a pressure test kit and see if it holds pressure, but I don't think I'm gonna do that. We're just gonna cross our fingers, hope it doesn't leak. Now, here's what I mean. Check this out. You can see this thing is oval shaped. It's not even round anymore so that's why my lid is popped off probably and it's giving me some issues now the first thing i want to do is get this power steering reservoir out of here there's a tab you just got to scooch over and the reservoir will slide right out and we'll just let it sit right there on this little lip then i'm going to disconnect this hose maybe i don't know if it's going to leak as long as i keep it up in the air we'll see Keep that up, uh, we'll try to keep it up. There we go. And if you have a stock air box, you'd also have to unhook that from the reservoir here too as well. But I do not, so I don't gotta worry about it. Okay, so I lied. I removed it anyways, just to get it out of the way and to see better. You guys watch any of my other videos, you know I remove more stuff than I need to remove. And the next trick is gonna be removing that bottom hose without making a mess, that is, I should add. I've got this container down here. Now that the air box has moved and I'm hoping I can stretch this hose over here. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do it. Just do a little Yankee Yankee. Let's try to empty this like this. There's like baffles and reservoirs, all kinds of in this thing. But I did get a lot more out. Okay, so pretty much filled this guy up. There's not gonna be much more I can get out of there. Okay, now that's, we're just gonna have to let it spill into a catch basin I got underneath. I don't think there's any more getting around it. But I can pull this up here between these AC hoses. It'll hold it in place for me while I take off the clamp. Okay, that was relatively painless. Now we'll slip on the aluminum. And give it the old test fit here. OK, 
Okay, this hood latch cable, I think that's what that is. It's kind of in the way at the moment. Let's see if we can just lift it up for now. And the clip for the cable's in the way too. That's gonna have to come out. So I keep wiggling and bending and stuff's starting to line up. Like I think I need to put a little twist on this guy. Uh, this is not exactly 100% in there, but it's all the way against the fender here. And that allows, it's, it's just about allowing everything to happen. We're gonna go for it. Might have to, I don't know about twisting it, but we'll see if I can just put a little twist on this to get it to sink down a little further. I might have to put like a spacer or a washer or something underneath it to take up the gap. Okay. Ooh. We're looking good enough. Put these bolts in. Also, I had to do a little bending on this leg here just to get it to fall down far enough. I'm stoked I didn't have to carve anything out. Look up this hose. Now, just fill it up with coolant. Let's see if uh, this guy falls in there. There's a little tab. Oh, there it goes. Might have to remove the tab. Nope. Yep. Gonna have to remove the tab. And actually, the reservoir won't go down all the way because it's so close to the fender. So it's just gonna have to sit like that. We'll pretend the tab is doing something. Hopefully it's low enough. Okay, just barely clears, so we're good. But this is pointing in a direction that's just not gonna work. So I think we're gonna have to... Yeah. Hopefully that seals, it's still sealed. It's just overflow, it's not under pressure anyway. Under the hose. Okay. <laughs> uh, hose is a different size. Should be the same size as this one. Okay, well first, let's trim this so it fits a little better. Okay. Then I'll run to the store and we'll find a, a nipple that will, if there is one that exists, that threads in there but it has a bigger barbed end for this end. I think for now we'll just let it chill or maybe I'll throw a hose clamp on it for now. We'll start by putting the fluid that I saved back in and we'll look for immediate leaks I guess. Hopefully there are none. Okay, so there is a leak down there at the hose where it slides onto the fitting. I'm gonna have to use a hose clamp because it's a little bit smaller diameter than the plastic one and it's just a little too loose on the fitting down there. So I think a hose clamp will take care of it.
Okay, it's all back together. It's no longer dripping as far as I can tell. We're gonna let it sit for a while since I have time to kill anyways. I gotta wait before I can go get some more fluid. I test fitted the cap earlier and the cap does seem like it fits like very nicely. That's one thing I'm really happy about is the cap fits phenomenally. But the edges on these are so sharp that they were getting carved up by this. So I took some sandpaper to all these edges underneath and up top just to smooth them out a little bit, round them over so hopefully they didn't curl up any more shavings the next time. Um, but yeah, this is a beautiful fit as far as the cap goes. Okay, well we're up and running. Just fired it up. And uh, you can't see, but I can feel it. And if you stick your finger in there, <laughs> you can definitely feel it. So we know we're circulating. And I should be topped off. It's, I shouldn't have to worry about the thermostat opening up. But we're gonna... We're gonna make sure it opens up regardless. And I'm about... I wish... Oh man. I wish I had to put some sort of sight glass in here. A couple of fittings like this. Drill some holes. Put a clear piece of tube in there. That would have been the poop. But we'll let this get up to temp and see if it uh, sucks down the level a little bit. Alright, we are up to temp on the needle and the fan just kicked on as I turned on the camera. So we're going to throw a lid on this, turn it off, and let it, uh, the heat cool down a little bit. And see if it sucks anything down. So that's going to be the video guys let me know what you think i did manage to get it fit you know i paid like 100 bucks for it compared to what would probably be 350 if nishimoto ever makes one or some other name brand company um there are some things to be desired like but you know not even mishimoto had a sight glass on the next generation one so but i think you know the fitment isn't quite perfect but i did get it to fit uh, even with, I got the reservoir to sit a little bit further down in there and it's not hitting the, the, what, why can't I remember this name? It's not hitting it. And, um, I don't think I have any pinholes, no leaks in the welds. So that was good. Got lucky with not pressure testing it first. But, uh, I think we'll see how that holds out. Obviously the lid you know area there isn't going to deform ever and turn oval like the plastic one did it won't turn yellow like the plastic one did so maybe like five years down the road or something if i decide to replace all the fluid again maybe i'll throw a sight glass in it or if i gotta empty it for some other reason i'll throw a little sight glass in it and then yeah there is there is this you know, this doesn't fit. It, note to DNA Motorsports, if there's another, if they're listening, if it's a real company or just a website that sells parts, you know, these should be the same. But until next time, guys, please like, subscribe, hit the bell, leave a comment, all that good stuff, and peace. All right, I found the right fitting to go in there. It's the next day if you can't tell. But this is, the thread is a quarter inch pipe thread. And the new barb is three eighths. The old barb was smaller than that, I guess quarter inch. Or maybe five sixteenths. Um, but it was smaller than three eighths. And that's why I had to replace it. Because it was just, the hose was just falling over it. And the barb that goes in the cap is eighth inch thread by also a 3 8 barb so we got both barbs now 3 8 and 3 8 put some tape on both of them put them back in and the hose should fit tightly and we'll put some tape on this one and thread it in another thing is this fitting is aluminum <coughs> and this fitting's brass not that that matters, it would uniformity would have been nice.
Oh yes, so good. And I like that it's floating above it too and not resting on it anywhere, so. Okay, good. We're not bottoming out in there and touching the cap at all. 